All right, Sam, got us? We got you, Daniel, can you hear me okay? Yeah, I got you. Fantastic, well, um, thank you for spending some time with us here on NASCAR Xfinity Series Playoffs Media Day. Um, as everyone knows, you are the defending NASCAR Xfinity Series champion. Um, we have lots of questions queued up for you in the queue and we will kick things off with Matt Weaver. Go ahead, Matt. Hey Daniel, thanks for taking some time today. Um, I know it's not been the season you guys wanted across the entire organization. I feel like from talking to Chris and AJ too, I know they feel the same way. Uh, but does this kind of feel like a healthy reset going into the playoffs and kind of just starting over in you? Uh, yeah, Matt, I'd say for sure. Um, obviously, a regular season, quite honestly, to not be proud of by any shape or form. But uh, there were so many times where we were, were on the cusp of, of kind of getting eliminated there or eliminating ourselves over the last four to five events leading you know, to the Bristol race that we just finished. Um, how we rallied and kind of gave ourselves a buffer there, That's there's something to be learned from that. So uh, I think when you have a regular season like we did, to be able to go and, and try, still try to identify your strengths and weaknesses and um, quite honestly, just know that now, you know, if anybody knows how the system works and, and an understanding of, of how, how you can benefit from it, it is me. So um, I look forward to having a clean slate, knowing that everything we've done within Colleague Racing um, over, you know, the regular season to prepare for this moment, hopefully we can, you know, get to Texas and, and um, you know, race each event one at a time and try to make the most of it, give yourselves another shot. Yeah, to that point, knowing the system, um, I feel like you're kind of in a similar spot to where you were last year too, in terms of the, the playoff point buffer that you had compared to the rest of the field. And you said you understand the system. So what does it take and what did it take last year for you to be able to go from where you're gonna start to getting to Phoenix and giving yourself a shot? Yeah, I think you go into it honestly with, with no expectations. Um, it's, as weird as that sounds, I think you go into it knowing that anything can happen, that nobody's safe. And in my opinion, it's more dangerous for the guys that have had the incredible regular seasons, that have won all the races, won all the stages. I come into it with nothing to lose. Uh, I've been fortunate enough to make that climb and, and win one of these things. Um, and now you just go out and try to do it for yourself and your family and, and your race team. And hey, if if our playoffs don't go according to plan, we tried, tried, really we tried like hell and we did everything we could to, to make it what we wanted to make it, but our regular season wasn't great and the playoffs weren't, so what? But if we go there and we can hit a couple walk-off home runs here and give ourselves the opportunity to get to Phoenix, I think we can be as dangerous as anyone. And that's a, that's a really cool feeling in any playoff format. Thanks, Daniel. Next question will come from Cole Cusmano. Go ahead, Cole. Thank you, Samantha. Thank you for your time today, Daniel. Uh, I'm curious, you talked about kind of hitting some of those walk-off home runs in a way and getting those wins. Um, what are some areas of emphasis that for yourself and the team in order to, to do that in the playoffs? Uh, honestly, there's, there's not one that we are not putting emphasis on. There's literally not a single area that we're not focused on. We know that throughout the regular season, our strengths were very few and our weaknesses were a lot. Um, and we've slowly but surely identified those and uh, identifying them and actually rectifying them are two different things. So we've been really trying to pull the rope same direction. A lot of things that we've tried haven't worked, but we have tried those things to, to gain data throughout the season. And um, hopefully we can, you know, like I said, put all the pieces of the puzzle in the right places. Um, obviously within Colleague Grayson with AJ Wynn, the regular season title, um, competing the way he does week in and week out. And just my past experience of doing this, I, I know – I know we can all do it. I know we can all achieve what we want to achieve here. We just got to have the cards fall fall the right way. But listen, this playoff starts. It's uh, it's all you got. So you've got to not only identify those things, but you got to go turn them around and, and make a push um, at the right time of the year. And now joining Colleg as the reigning champion and the playoffs obviously beginning right now, has AJ or anyone else in the organization kind of turned to you for advice maybe of how to tackle this upcoming postseason? Uh, not, not really, man, to be honest with you. Uh, I think myself and AJ both have been in this situation enough. Um, AJ's a, a world-class race car driver that I respect probably almost more than anybody else in the garage. He is incredible at what he does and his craft and, and how he goes and maximizes his days. He does not need to know or lean on me for anything. Um, but I, I value him as a teammate, value him as a friend. 
uh, as well as, you know, our other partners and, and teammate Landon Castle. Uh, it's a shame that he's not in this deal with us, but, you know, he's, he literally looked me in the eye yesterday at our, one of our meetings and asked me what he could do to, to help me, to help AJ, you know, what he could do for us to help us. So that's a, that's a powerful thing to have teammates like that. And I'm proud of that. Um, but at this level, man, you gotta, you gotta know what you need to do. You don't need, you don't need anybody else. You gotta do what, what works for you. Oh, thank you, Daniel. Yep. Next we'll go to Dustin Albino. Go ahead, Dustin. Yeah, Daniel, with the with the struggles you alluded to this year, like how much of an equalizer is the first round going to three vastly different tracks? Uh, yeah, I think it definitely can be. Um, I think I saw earlier Kyle Larson was quoted saying that you know this round for the Cup guys was a weird round. I think it's uh, it is that, but it's also a round of a lot of opportunity. Um, I think if if you view it that way and and you take the value in it that way, I think it can you know really reap some some huge benefits for yourself and your race team. Um, yeah, two, I'm sorry, three totally different racetracks. Um, honestly, some tracks that I feel like we've had fairly good opportunities at this year to sit and maximize our days. But yeah, I'm, I'm fairly optimistic as we go this first round to give ourselves a shot to get to the next one. And I know, you know, everything's different from last year, different team, different manufacturer, everything. But can you consider yourself a dark horse or do you consider yourself a dark horse? Listen, you can look at our regular season. We should not be racing for a championship in Phoenix. But I also know that this race team can get to Phoenix. And if we can get there, I can feel as strong as anyone that we can compete. So uh, that's why, you know, through the first part of the season, not really being a, a mix or a player, if you will. Um, I don't know. There's something different about the playoffs. I, I love being on the rise of the occasion. I'm um, looking forward to this race team having an opportunity to do the same thing. Thank you. Yep. Next question will come from Claire B. Lang. Go ahead, Claire. Thank you. Can you talk about the things about Texas Motor Speedway that make it a challenge, the surface, et cetera, and how you've digested what you'll find there? Yeah, Claire, I think Texas, you know, we all talk about how different both ends of the racetrack are, but I think the biggest variable when we go to Texas now that we've all seen the repay for a couple of years is going there and just understanding where the grip level is for the temperature of that time of the year, as well as, you know, really the, the grip level of the substances and the tire drag and the rubber gets laid down and where it's at on the racetrack. That seems to be something that has changed every single time we've been there. And, um, you know, NASCAR is only getting smarter uh, about how to apply it, where to apply it and what to use when they apply. Um, and as they do that, it makes the racing there better and better. I don't think we've actually been to Texas where since the repay where the racing was worse than the previous races. So um, that's that gives us as drivers and race teams more options. Um, you know, the smarter we get with all that all that process. And um, yeah, it's just something that we're all going to go and adjust to on the fly in our short 20 minute practice and a qualifying session and, and be able to go adapt in the race. It frustrates some people, including some of the cup drivers, that it's changing or that, you know, they, it's just uncomfortable. It's just like trying to figure it out all the time. Yeah, I mean, obviously it can be frustrating, but I, I always try to look at it from, from the glass half full and to understand that it's the same for everybody. And no matter what that surface is, is dirt, asphalt, High bank, no bank, traction compound or not, it's the same for everybody, and it's up to us to go navigate it, and that's what we get paid to do. Do you try to look at every track as if if there's one that frustrates you, you don't let it creep into your head, or do you try to look at every track like it's coming up, got to race it, just, you know what I mean? Yeah, so I'll tell you, my, my spotter, Brett Griffin, texted me before Bristol, and he says, man, uh, you know, we were coming off of Kansas, it's like, man, Kansas is in the rearview mirror, look forward to Bristol, I really like Bristol. My response back to him was, I like every damn one of them, so that's the way I approach it. Good attitude. Good luck this weekend. All right. Absolutely. Thanks, sir. All right. Next question will come from John Newby. Go ahead, John. Kind of following up on that, is Texas the best place for you since you've been st statistically strong there across multiple teams and since there is so much chaos at Talladega and the Roval? Uh, I don't necessarily look at it that way. No, I feel like, I feel like, yeah, Texas has been a, a great racetrack for me in the past, kind of in all configurations and all race teams, but I've had some really good race cars there. So um, I feel like driving a good race car, a fast race car, a balanced race car is is the key. And I think we have, you know, our honestly, our weakest program has been probably that style of racetrack all year. Um, but we also know hopefully that's a place where we can make our most gains when we start this playoff. So uh, looking at the speedways, all of college racing statistics speak for themselves as, where, as well as the Roval with AJ winning the last couple of years in a row. Um, yeah, so I – I don't look at it outside of that. You know, we just have an opportunity to go there as a race team and improve on what we did in the spring. Um, and I feel like 
that room for growth was very big. So pretty optimistic about it. Cool. Thank you. Yep. Next question will come from Nathan Solomon. Go ahead, Nathan. Thank you, Daniel. Thanks for the time. Um, sure. For Kansas, you and Landon swap crew chiefs. Just how well is that that switch uh, you know, working with Jason gone and how can the switch help you guys in the playoffs? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, just trying to think how to answer that. I, I feel like in most organizations, you know, all the teams kind of had their own identity as far as their process of how, you know, my, my crew chief sets up my car, my, our chief sets up my car, and engineers, and how Landon's guys would have done it. That's not the case here, colleague. Literally, we have like one group of guys who rolls every car on the service plate, sets every car up together, and the teams are given their cars, right? So then we go to the racetrack and, you know, wedge them and track bar them and shock adjustments here and there. But for the grand scheme of things, they're all the same. Um, and then when we get to the simulator, actually, Landon's what was crew chief and now my crew chief, Jason Trinchera. So he he was actually the guy who ran those sim sessions. So all of our drivers at Colleague have spent a lot of time with Jason. So it wasn't like just cold turkey kind of throwing me into a new process. The process stays the same till we get to the racetrack. We were just more or less looking for a little spark to try to help Landon maximize his days and, and let me maximize ours. And quite honestly, that comes directly from – Matt Colley and Chris Rice and those changes get made and Landon and I look at them and say, okay, if that's what y'all believe. And we, we back you up on it. And, and um, I feel like it hadn't necessarily hindered us or slowed us down in any shape or form. Um, it really hasn't been much of a change at all, but we are only two weeks in. So I think uh, to be determined on what the full outcome of the change actually looks like. Sure. And, and it seems like this year overall in Xfinity, there's been a, a lot more parity and a lot more very competitive teams compared to previous years. Uh, is that a fair assessment? And, and do you think some of those, those competitive non-playoff teams could potentially affect some of the results of the races? Uh, yes, uh, I, th I think that's fair about the competitiveness, you know, further through the field. Uh, I think with, you know, I think there's a couple of factors there, but one of them being, you know, with the next gen car coming to the Cup Series and a lot of the Cup inventory, you know, that made – I've made a lot of available inventory for a lot of smaller Xfinity teams and some that even were not necessarily smaller teams, but needed kind of a bump in technology and whatnot. I think it kind of brought everybody closer because of that. Um, those, those guys had availability to those resources and, and we had the same availability. We just haven't maximized it. So, um, you know, we look at it as, as that's the reason why I feel like the, the, the depth of the Xfinity field has only gotten deeper, um, which is a great thing for our viewers and everyone that tunes into NASCAR Xfinity series racing every single weekend. And uh, quite frankly, well, I feel like the viewers love what our series is. So, um, yeah, I, I think, you know, it's just fun to see, fun to see, you know, even no different a cup series now where you have three guys, three non-playoff guys win the first three cup races of the first round. I think there's potential to see guys that necessarily aren't in the Xfinity Series playoffs win races. So that's, a, that's cool from a, from a viewership standpoint and hopefully something everybody can attach to. Thank you. Yep. Take our next question from RJ Starcevic. Thank you. Hey, Daniel. So obviously you went last year on uh, top of the mountain Xfinity Series champion. And this year you take the big transition, brand new team. And you're also running cup races in a, in a brand new race car, different race car. So kind of how, how, what is the biggest challenge you think been for you as a driver to just kind of get situated with your new team, running cup races and everything like that? What's, what's been the biggest challenge there for you? <laughs> yeah, I, th I think for me, um, you know, it's, it's looking back at, my time spent at RCR, right? Colleague was a was a you know part of RCR in a way in my years of 2017 and 18, driving the Xfinity cars there. Um, you know, before they really had kind of really got rolling as a competitive Xfinity series team, and they've obviously built to that over the last couple of years. And and I was pumped to join that. Um, but I think you know your question about what the challenge has been. The challenge has been I've gotten back in these cars at a time where where whether it was documented in the media or not, there were some subtle changes to the aerodynamics of these cars, the underbody, the pan area of these race cars that have changed the balance a pretty significant amount. And with that happening, you know, we did a colleague race and just felt off. And the reason I bring that up is when I got to RCR in 2017, when myself, Austin, Dylan, Ty Dylan, Brandon Jones, Brendan Gallen, I can name off everybody that drove our cars at that time. You know, none of us could hardly run top five and, and compete inside the top 10. We just didn't feel like we had what we needed yet. We didn't have the speed or the balance. And coming here to Colleague, I feel like I've struggled, honestly, with feeling a lot of the similarities of those cars then to now. Uh, and that's what's kind of led myself and AJ and Landon to be very vocal about where we need to be better, um, how we can improve. Um, but like I said, identifying that and actually making a change and 
and seeing results are two different things. So just been trying to get over those things. Obviously, it's easy to look back upon those years and be like, man, I remember when the cars felt like this, we did this. Unfortunately, though, a lot of those things don't apply anymore with how the sport has just evolved naturally. So, yeah, just uh, just trying to jump those hurdles and, and try to pivot the correct direction whenever you need to. Um, and as far as the cup side of things, man, it's just for me, it was a huge blessing to just have the opportunity for Matt Colleague and Chris Rice to run those cup races, just to be a part of, you know, this kind of evolving sport that we're all living right now. It's very, very special uh, to be able to run some races in the inaugural season of the next gen car. Um, heck, we came out of the gate, ran 12th at the 500 and ninth the following week at Fontana and kind of went through a pretty rough patch when I've been in that car ever since. But to know I've had opportunity to fill those cars at the very beginning, um, and hopefully there's more down the road for me um, on that side as well. Thank you, Daniel. Best of luck in the playoffs. Thank you. All right, Daniel, we know you are on a very tight schedule, so we will go ahead and let you get to your next stop. We appreciate your time. Apologies we didn't get to everyone's question. Um, but just a reminder, media, this uh, audio and video will be available here shortly on nascarmedia.com. Thank Sounds you, Daniel. Appreciate it. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.